Hi guys, welcome to a new video and today I'm going to be showing my top 5 favourite albums of 2014. This will be my last video now for this year. Um, I'll be back in January with my new update with all the things I've had uh, Christmas and New Year because my birthday as well on New Year's Day. And um, yeah, I hope there's some new releases as well. Um, but before I get on to the um, top 5, I, I just want to say that 2014 has been another good year for music. Um, there haven't been that many big, massive releases um, by huge artists, I don't think, uh, artists I particularly like. Um, but there's been some really good releases, including one by my favourite artist ever. Um, so it's been quite a good uh, finale um, end. So um, I'm looking forward to next year as well. Some really good releases on the way. I'll get to them at the very end of the video. Um, so this was a tricky choice. Um, it's basically, from my opinion, what I like best out of all this. Um, so we get started with number five, and it's um, St Vincent, uh, ST. Uh, I, I, the reason I chose this, it was a, um, between this or Lana Del Rey, Ultraviolence. And I absolutely love Ultraviolence. I think it's a great album. I love the concept and the theme of it, and I love the majority of the songs of it. But... Um, I've been listening to this one a lot recently um, because I bought this came out at the start of the year and I listened to it a few times and I loved it and then I just stopped and sometimes I might go back to an album which I think deserves to be heard again by me um, so I've been listening to this a few um, times lately and um, it's just even better than I, when, I, when I first heard it first time around I've been listening to the album like pretty much all the way through as well um, my favourite song is probably, it's probably Prince Johnny, it's just absolutely flawless and it's it sounds like it's in a different world, the way you listen to it. Um, I love the artwork as well, it's just really, really stylish and well made and it's fantastic. Um, I'm kind of glad that she's getting a bit more of recognition as well um, because I know the albums that were released before this really weren't that well known. Um, it was kind of like an indie sort of setting. Um, but she's got a lot more recognition now for this album and hopefully more in the future. So, uh, very pleased result. Um, so, this one's in at number five. At number four is um, a debut by um, a new pop singer and her name's Foxes um, with the album Glorious, the debut album. Um, the reason I chose this as well is because I think this is just a really fun, simple um, pop album with some really interesting sounds and... Um, the way it's put together and it's just a really good pop album with some really great singles off it. Um, of course, because the, the Youth, um, which is the second track of this, was released like a few years ago, there's been quite a gap in, in between the single releases until she actually started the campaign properly and she released um, uh, Let Go For Tonight and then Holding On To Heaven and then she released the, uh, the single Glorious. So it's been quite a good album run. It's a shame that Glorious, the single, didn't do that well, but um, looking forward to their second album anyway. And my favourite songs are Youth, Holding On To Heaven, Night Owls, Early Birds, um, and probably Echo as well. Really, really great album. It's just fun, simple. Um, it's, there's hardly any filler on it as well. A couple of tracks that I mentioned, like Night Owl or The Birds, could, could have been easily a single. Um, so I'm really looking forward to um, the next album from Foxes. Um, really impressed. At number three is um, one that I really love and I just cherish this, and it's Tori Amos' Unrepentant Geraldine. Um, of course, fantastic album, amazing. It, the reason why I like this so much as well is because it came out the day I went to see her live, so it's really special and will always have that place now in me where I'll just have memories of buying this and seeing it on the same day and listen to it. And I've, I've been listening to this album on a lot, even lately, because um, this came out in May, I'm still listening to it now and learning new things about the album and new about the lyrics and everything. It's all coming together very nicely. And I do think this is her best album since The Beekeeper, um, nearly 10 years ago. It's just a big step up from the previous few albums, Night of Hunters and Gold Dust. Um, just fantastic. I love the artwork, I love the, the, the songs, how they flow together. 
Um, the only thing that I don't like about this is that um, the track listing uh, on the back and in the book are uh, wrong, which I found was pretty weird. I don't know if that was a mistake or if it was intentionally meant to be like that, um, but fantastic. My favourite songs are um, The Wild Way, um, Selkie, Weatherman and Maybe Invisible Boy as well. So fantastic. Really good. I really do recommend listening to this, even if you're not a fan of Tori Amos. Number two is Paloma Faith, um, A Perfect Contradiction. I'm just going to say the Outsiders edition, which is the re re release in this, because it has basically all the songs off it. Um, 15 tracks. Um, fantastic album, yet again, from Paloma Faith. Absolutely love that, and I'm going to see it next year in uh, March. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, just a amazing album um I, I really do i don't know if this one's better than the first two i think they're all good in in their own way um I, what i love, love about this one though is that it's got a fun disco sound on it and um yeah the the reissue as well it's got some really good extra tracks on here um it's got um ready for the good life which i wasn't very keen on at first i thought it was a bit meh, but it's starting to grow on me and it just get a bit more catchier the more you listen to it and Leave While I'm Not Looking, which is apparently the next single, and the vocals sound really great. It's sort of like an Annie Love Can Hurt Like This Part 2, I'd like to say. And Annie Love Can Hurt Like This is the best track off the album. I still love it now. Um, Taste My Own Tears, love it, and Trouble With My Baby. Fantastic. So I really do recommend getting this if you haven't got it, or have listened to the, some of the songs off YouTube. Um, and I really want to try and get the um, the Outsiders um, edition Deluxe, which has the live from the Poms uh, disc. That would be amazing. So, um, yeah, fantastic plan, and I really am looking forward to the next album, even though it'll be a while away yet, but I still can't wait. So, that's um, number two. And last, and certainly not least, was um, it was going to be Plan of Faith until this al album came out in July, and it's just. Um, absolutely a masterpiece. It just, I can't believe how good it is, and it should have got way more success. And it's Larue Trouble in Paradise. Um, I always loved Larue anyway. Back in two thousand and nine, when she released her debut, I loved that album. It gives back good memories because I was at college at the time, and I remember listening to it over and over again. And then uh, they disappeared for ages, and I was having worries that. Um, the album would never come out and I had doubts that they were going to split or something um, until Light at the End of the Tunnel she released um, Trouble in Paradise and I thought it was going to be good um, I was expecting good things about it and but when I just bought this on the day and got home and listened to it all the way through I just think this album is an absolute masterpiece it's even better than the first album and I love the first album Everything that was that I loved about the first one which was, was just improved on this one. Um, because the first album has a much more colder sound, a bit more darker, and the beats are a lot more... Um, just not wa not as warm. And the, Eddie Jackson, the singer, did say that this album was going to be a lot more warmer, and it's true. Um, the singles like Uptight Downtown, Kiss and Not Tell, which really does represent what this album is about. Um, Sex Attack, which is my favourite track off this album. Tropical Chance, which is the like um, the red guy Grace Jones style song, um, and then it has a Silent Partner, which is a really long track at seven minutes, I think. Um, the only track that I don't really like off this is the feeling. I think it's just a bit. Um, I don't think it really fits on that much, but if you disagree, then that's fine. Um, there's only known tracks on this album, but there's absolutely no filler at all. Um, the artwork's beautiful as well, the concept of it as well, because Trouble in Paradise is an actual meaning, but it's actually brought to life in this album itself. Um, I really cannot wait for the third album. I just hope we don't have to wait another five years for the next one. That would just be a pity. But this album was worth the wait, and... I've just buy it because it just deserves more and more sales. Um, it reached number six, but um, I think it dropped out quite fast afterwards at the charts. 
Um, I've got this on vinyl as well, and it sounds even better. And um, yeah, fantastic. Definite album 2014. And that is it. I really would like to um, see in the comments below what your favourite albums of of this year, and if there's any that I think that you think I should check out before this year closes. Be my guest. Um, and 2015, I'm really looking forward to it because there's some returns from some artists like Ellie Goulding, Marina and the Diamonds with Fruit, which I'm just cannot wait for. Madonna as well with Rebel Heart, I think it's called. Um, I think that's what the official album's going to be called. That's going to be released in March, I think. So that's another big release. Um, and maybe a few more as well that I've missed out. I think Tori Amos is releasing a new album next year, but it's going to be like a sort of soundtrack musical album from The Light Princess, so I'll probably buy that anyway, because it is Tori Amos after all. Um, so, some good releases. And that is it everyone. I, thank you very much for supporting me this year. Um, I, hope, I hope you all have a great Christmas as well, and New Year. And um, I'll be back in January with all the things I've picked up. And like I said, leave any comments and stuff and I'll reply as soon as possible. So, um, happy Christmas everyone and um, speak to you soon.